Welcome to Gulfstream Park. It is March 20th, 2014. Christina Bosanak is here with Ron Nicoletti. It's that time of week. We're going to be seeing you a lot more, Ron, here, our main man. And uh, skies look a little bit menacing. I didn't I think that we were. That. I didn't think there was going to be rain in the forecast, but apparently. Well, a friend of ours was. We were walking up there. We said, "Is it supposed to be rain today?" They said, "It's Florida." So uh, I guess it could happen. But we're dealing with a fast main track, firm turf course. Might be just a cloud blowing over. And uh, as everyone knows, we got the huge carryover in the Rainbow Six here. 3.441. That's 3.4 million dollars. Wow. Yeah, and that starts in race five on today's card. But uh, we have uh, so much happening. Uh, looking forward not only to uh, this week or weekend, uh, the inside information that's our great at stake on Saturday. But next week, Ron, the Florida Derby that's on Saturday. The stakes at seven stakes. Uh, on March 29th, what a loaded uh, card we will have! But there's a lot going leading into the Florida Derby. We always have a lot happening here at Gulfstream. Well, you know the Florida Derby is the premier event here at Gulfstream Park. But uh, leading up to the week, lots of things going on, and it kicks off Tuesday. Right, uh, we have a uh, tournament, a golf tournament. For a charity, and it all uh, benefits the Disabled Jockeys Fund. So uh, you can get all the information in, in the front desk at Silks if you'd like to play, and it's a fantastic cause. And we also have there's a poker tournament. I think that's on Wednesday night. Yeah, the first the, the, the day starts. We actually draw the race of the Florida Derby early in the morning up at Ten Palms at 11:15. So if you come up there, uh, you can watch the uh, uh, you know the horses being drawn. So you'll know ahead of everyone uh, mm -hmm. who's going to be and where they're going to be positioned in the. Florida Derby, and then that evening is the poker tournament, and I know a lot of the uh, jockeys and trainers play in there, so you can uh, get in that, and also for a good cause, part of that goes to the Disabled Jockey Fund. I know a couple of years ago, it was Todd Fletcher who actually won that uh, that uh, poker tournament. And I was hoping he donated all the money, he <laughs> might have donated all the money to the Disabled Jockey Fund, but if this year, if he wins, I'm going to be pressing him to do that. Well, he's always a very generous guy. But we do also have a party here on Friday night, and it'll be open to the public after after eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, yeah. It's a private uh, first uh, couple hours, and then it open to the public. It's a, it's a lot of fun. They have open uh, bars here. You can buy drinks and hang out and uh, mingle with all the uh, different folks. And if you see either Christina and I, come up and say hello to us uh, at the party, and we'll be all ready. And a big important thing. First race on Florida Derby Saturday is 12 p.m., so that's one hour earlier than normal, so it's going to be just a great day full of pomp and circumstance on Saturday and Florida Derby Day. I'm already getting chills. And uh, great betting opportunities as well. Pick five is going to have a 250,000 uh, guarantee in the late pick four. There's also a guarantee in there, too. 400,000. 400, so uh, uh, I, mean, I don't think we'll have a problem. And I've been watching them, uh, them putting in extra tote machines here, so uh, should be a wild and fun day here at Gulfstream Park and uh, it's always crowded and always a, a whole lot of fun. It sure is but uh, we'll keep you apprised uh, as the, the days go on of all the events that are, will be happening here at Gulfstream but before we get too far ahead of ourselves let's take a look at today's card yep. and we do have a 10 race card on tap headed by the first race on the card is a 6250 claiming event seven furlongs on the main track and there is a jockey change on number one zipping along will be ridden by Dylan Davis and my top selection I went with number six distinct affair who is uh, it looks like it's going to be showing speed in here Ron in a, in a race that uh, I wasn't really sure who else might be showing speed in here but I see that you went in another direction you went with number seven uh, Sherry Angel yeah, and that's because of the drop of competition. Going to drop to the $6,250 level. Stretch out today to seven furlongs after making a middle move and flattening out. Uh, to finish seven, beating four and a half lengths. But that was a, a, a you know, race that produced a couple of next out winners. It was a $12,500 claimer, a condition claimer, going six and a half furlongs. I just think the drop in competition is there. But as we always tell you at Gulfstream Park, uh, with the six horse that Christina picked, if uh, that horse should win the first race, win its speed. Let's uh, start playing attention to the uh, track and how it's playing for later on when you get your Rainbow Six ticket going. So uh, uh, right now the favorite very early in the betting is the number seven Sherry Angel. 
and uh, looking on to the second race on the card and it kicks off the early pick four it is a 12-5 uh, claiming test mile and a 16th on the turf course you do have a scratch and that is number eight uh, also a main track only entrant and I went with number one your Quia, and it looks like you went exactly in the same direction and Ron I think that last race was just probably that was 25,000 uh, allow uh, starter allowance and I think uh, that was a tough that was a tough heat and so we're dropping here considerably yeah and if you look at that race on March 5th that was against $16,000 claiming beaten only a half cent so now with the, the uh, drop in competition certainly looks like the logical choice in there uh, and uh, you know going to use that horse in the second half for the uh, early early double also threw in the five and the eight and you threw in the five five and uh, the three excuse me and you threw in the five and the four so we're, we're in agreement with the top selection in there yeah, I think we are on to the third race on the card. It is a maiden special weight for uh, fillies and mares, four year olds and up. It is six furlongs on the main track and uh, a short field, but a couple of really interesting horses in here, Ron. I went to with number four, and that's Heaven's Touch from the Wesley Ward barn. And uh, this is a four year old mare by Montbrook. Uh, her times in the morning, she's been really, really. Oh, I think it's raining. <laughs> I hear the rain actually is coming, but uh, very, very fast to works in the morning and that caught my attention but another horse I also used on my ticket number two revise and this is a daughter of first defense the dam uh, Harpia was a great three winner this is the family of Dane Hill and Dane Hill a very famous stallion not only was he a great one or a group one winner he's he basically runs the show in Australia down under in terms of a as a as a stallion and the horse has been well prepped you look 11 uh, workouts over the Payson Park uh, training track in Payson Park if you're not aware up in Indian Town, a deeper surface, so the horses really get legged up there. And we both had the uh, number four, as you mentioned, having to touch. Wesley Ward, this horse is just lights out, and Wesley really good with first time starters. And we both, uh, I used the five called to watch the daughter of Majestic Warrior in the second spot. But boy, they're going to have to do some running to beat the four. Heaven's Touch. Yeah, I think so too. And I also used number three. I used number three, Smashing, uh, daughter of Malibu Moon. She's a half to a multiple stakes winner, holiday runner. Also, pretty good work, I thought, last time. Uh, from the barn of Jimmy Jerkins. On to the fourth race on today's card, and it is a 35,000 claiming race, one mile on the turf course. We do have a jockey change. Number four, startup, will be ridden by Paco Lopez, and number seven is scratched. And uh, I went with number two, and this is Desert Strike from the Mark Cassie barn, getting blinkers on. Uh, for the first time here. And uh, it's coming out of a race, a 50,000 claiming event, dropping a company here. I think that fits in with this bunch and probably meant to, I think uh, I'm considering this one a little bit better on the turf, or I'm hoping, but I know that you went with uh, number five, McElroy, um, and uh, running for Chad Brown. Yeah, we have a flip-flopped exactly. McElroy is going to face these non-winners of two lifetime uh, claimers. Drawing and clear late as the favorite in its last rate. Defeated $35,000 maidens right here on December 26th. Chad Brown, really good with this kind of uh, fresh league, 61 to 180 days, about 30%. Love Jose Lascano on the turf, but I, I'm also going to use the two desert strikes, so we got our exactter flip-flop in there, and uh, should be uh, an interesting pent ultimate race before the Rainbow Six. We're going to take a short uh, break, folks. We'll come back and have a look at that fifth race that kicks off the Rainbow Six. There's $3.4 million is the carryover today. OBS, the two-year-old source to the world in 2013. With undefeated juvenile champion Asia Express drawing high praise in Japan. Two-time Breeders' Cup champion Secret Circle and Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile winner Golden Sense in North America. Make plans to find your next champion at OBS two-year-old sales in 2014. OBS, we measure success by performance. ExpressBet brings you a whole new way to play the races. An easier, better way to wager on your favorite tracks. With a more streamlined interface for faster wagering. With more handicapping insights from our world-class experts. With more racetracks, nearly 200 to choose from. And with your personalized multi-view wagering screen, your tracks, your wager pad, and your video are all on one page. It's simply the best way to play the races. Your way. Welcome to ExpressBet. Your way to play.
You're a funny girl. Yeah, welcome <laughs> back to Gulfstream. Our man Ron always keeping us entertained. It's raining a little bit right now, and we're talking about, I was looking on my, my Doppler. It looks like there's like a little pocket of rain just sitting right over our head. Yeah, I don't think it's going to affect much. The turf course can certainly use some rain. I, I don't think there'll be a problem at all. And the fifth race kicks off that rainbow six, $3.4 million. Wow, it is really, you should, the buzz around the track has just been fantastic with this. Everybody, who you got? Who you are? You're alive? You're not alive? So, uh, Always a lot of fun when it gets up there in the million dollar, a couple of million dollar range. Right, and um, this is an interesting race. It is a 75,000 allowance optional claiming event. It's a mile 16th on the main track. And there are five horses in here, and, and it's, it's interesting because both you and I went in a different directions. I went with number four, and that's Talons of Tuscany, a three-year-old colt by Arch. I was really impressed uh, by his last race, his uh, career debut. Now, he bore out just a little bit late. We'll see this in just a minute, Ron. And uh, I thought a very nice performance. He, he actually looks like a horse of quality as well. I'm very fond of him. Showed speed that day, and here we see him just he's veering out just a, a touch. A little bit, he still looks like he's probably a little bit green, Ron, but I thought that was a really good race. And if you look at his uh, latest workout, 58 four fifth seconds. He's also got the speed advantage, and I'm not sure anybody else, uh, who's going to go with him. I have on my ticket, but I was, I was sort of enamored with the number five, Solomon Slayer, who raced for the uh, $75,000 tag in this optional claim, and knocking heads with some of the better three-year-olds in training. If you look at the horses this guy's been running against, Commissioner, Constitution, Top Billing, and that was in, uh, you know, back-to-back -back starts, training Kelly Green. It's got the leading apprentice, Dylan Davis. So going off the, you know, the company line that this horse has been keeping, threw him on my ticket, but certainly got the number four talons of Tuscany on my ticket. You know, I didn't use him initially. I was looking at the third graph sheets this morning, and um, obviously we can tell, like, the horses he's been running against. He beat Commissioner back at Monmouth Park uh, last summer, but it looks also like his numbers, his figures are improving, too. So he looks like he's a horse that's uh, on an upswing. So uh, definitely a horse that you're going to have to uh, look on uh, later you got to put it on your rainbow I, six I think so. Sure. And we both use number two, Joe's Gone Wild. I think he's a, he's a very quick gelding. And last time, they put blinkers on. That didn't work out. Blinkers right, come back okay. off <laughs> next time. No, thanks. <laughs> so I guess this race is not a single. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is what we're saying. On to the Sixth race on today's card. It is a maiden special weight of three-year-olds and up. And uh, it is a one mile on the main track. And we do have a scratch. Number two, Classy Kid. And uh, my top selection, I went with number seven, Successful Runner. And uh, comes out of the race. My only um, uh, thought with this horse is uh, we had a couple of horses that uh, finished ahead of him uh, in that last race on February 7th, uh, Accelerare and um, Take to the Streets. They both ran here last week. They didn't run as well as we thought that, that they were going to run, but yeah. I still think he's a horse. He's very consistent. He's, uh, he's shown that he has quality. You look at his back class. He finished third behind a horse named Cross Traffic last uh, year, last winter here. Cross tra Traffic, of course, went on to win a grade one later in the season. But I see that you went with uh, uh, Mr. Blue Blood, <laughs> Mr. Besselou, $4.2 million. Uh, he's a son of AP Indy, the damn balance. She's a multiple grade one stakes winner. She's also a half to Zenyatta, Horse of the Year. Yeah, and $4.2 million, and you know the whole story about it. if you listen to Christina, she was actually at the sale when this horse was sold, and I just think this is the spot, maybe, where uh, that Mr. Besselou can get that maiden win, and the reason I didn't have the seven successful run on top of the ticket was for all the reasons you just meant, Chalilar, it just ran, did not run well yeah. the other day, so I, I flip-flopped these, and I think this might be that spot for Mr. Besselou, you know, from the Billy Mott barn, Joel Rosario will handle uh, the surface switch going back from the from the turf back to the main track and might be the spot for this horse today. Yeah, a couple of horses also to watch. Number three, Alex Indeed. Uh, Nick Zito trains this one, getting a huge uh, swing in the weights, uh, given that uh, we have uh, Carson Sullivan aboard. And he's also a horse is well-bred. He's a half-two war dancer. He won the grade two Virginia Derby. So a little bit of pedigree. And also number four, Argyle, $650,000 at the Keeneland September sale 2011. He's a half-two, a multiple graded stakes winner. And I also have some 
interest in the one horse in here, Albinator, I think it's pronounced, turned it back to a mile, and he was uh, running against Ring Weekend, who went up and won the Tampa Bay Derby. So uh, maybe an all button if you have enough money here. For the, the sun's out, by the, the way. It's a beautiful day in South Florida. Don't listen to Christina. <laughs> the guns are not out, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> On to the uh, seventh race. And the seventh race is a um, 25,000 maiden claiming. It is a five furlongs on the turf course. We have a jockey change. That is number four, Amber Morning, will be ridden by Elvis Trujillo. And this kicks off the late, the late pick four, Ron. So my choice, I went with number five, uh, Miss Livona. And uh, last, that last race, that was at Aqueduct back in December. That was on the dirt, getting back to the turf here. That was also going six furlongs. So shortening up in trip, I think that's going to help. Uh, I think we uh, the jockey changes on the three in there, if I remember correctly. Margarita Island, I think. Oh, we did? Okay. okay. So uh, we'll, okay. we'll check on that. But Larry will be up here. Yeah, and Coleman's we'll straighten out all, all that. And I did went, went mm -hmm. also go with number five, Miss Livona. Uh, debuts locally, Mike Maker. You know, Mike Maker, what a great media he's having. He's second to Todd. Fletcher, he's got, uh, I think Todd's got like 60 wins, but Mike is right there with 40 something wins. Uh, uh, so he's just having a fantastic meeting. Javier Castellano just lights out for a whole year and a half now. So, for all those reasons, we both have, I believe, the number five, Miss Lavona, on top of our tickets. And then a couple of other horses to use. I see that we, um, Elvis is, we're getting confirmation. Yeah, it is Elvis, number three. It is number yeah, three. Yeah, I thought it was. But. That's, why, that's why we've got our man, Ron Nicoletti, <laughs> here to keep me honest. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, it is number three. Margarita Island will be ridden by Elvis Trujillo. But uh, back to, I was just saying, how many horses we're going to have to use in there? That is the late pick four. We're going to have to use a, a, a couple, I would imagine. Yeah. We both had the eight on there with yeah. uh, Scat Daddy's Breeze, making a career to a few, stalk the pace, and hired a local debut, five furlongs on the seal sloppy track. I love Scat Daddy's on the grass, yeah. and that's the main reason. I know you too. do too. And I use the seven, you use the one. Uh, you know, there's not uh, big 12 horse fields in here, but this is a pretty tough for Rainbow Six when you get down to it. You have to spread a couple of spots here today. I think you do too. On to the eighth race on the card, and it is a starter allowance, so claiming price of $35,000. Six and a half furlongs on the main track. And uh, my top selection, my top selection was uh, one of the scratches in here, and a significant scratch at that. Number five, Dad's Laugh, also scratch number one, Russian Greek. And a uh, couple of jockey changes, number three, On the Loose again, Joel Rosario. And number four, Closer Walk, will be ridden by Dylan Davis. But, uh, Ron, this changed things up for me a little totally. bit. Totally. This was both our, if you look at the tip sheet that we do here, I think it was both our best bets this afternoon. And we're talking about the horse that's not going to play Dad's Laugh. So it sort of uh, makes me like the number seven, Delkin's Warrior Laugh. Uh, this one has been, Delkin's Warrior, excuse me, has really been training uh, nicely up at Palmetto. Preparation for their first start since it uh, was eased in the King's Bishop up at Saratoga in August at grade one. So a little bit of a shaky call here because the horse hasn't run that long. But if you go by the word, Looks pretty good. And he's a great at stakes winner. He won the grade three Bayshore last year. He certainly has the class edge, I would think, in here. One of the horses I threw on my ticket, number four, Closer Walk, after the defection of uh, Dad's Laugh, who's probably going to show some speed. Uh, I put in Closer Walk, you have to, because he's got speed in there, and uh, now that he has a, uh, with uh, Dylan Davis aboard, I think that's a really, I think it's a good ho a horse that you're going to have to use with this, by, just because of the speed. Yeah, and I, also, I just did the same, instead of four, I put the three on, on uh, the loose again, who stalks the pace, so if the horse doesn't make it that Christina just mentioned, maybe this horse also stalk and get the job done, but Duncan's Warrior, lots of class. On to the ninth race. It is a 62-50 allowance, optional claiming. It is five furlongs on the turf course, and uh, we do. There are no scratches or changes thus far in that race. And I went with number five, and that's a mishmash uh, coming into this off of a second-place effort, beaten a length and a quarter, and that was on February 17th. We can have a look at that race. And Duran, uh, not only did uh, mishmash come out of this race, uh, but we also see who was was uh, Texas Rush. Russler also yeah. got a little bit of the of the worst of it right there yeah. at the start. And uh, but uh, Texas Rustler, I was just about to say, he's mm -hmm. on my ticket. He yeah. also came out of this race as well. Yeah, well, he certainly had some trouble in there. But Miss Mosh, nice nice performance by uh, the number six horse after that early trouble got her on the top of my ticket for all the reasons uh, that we just showed you. So a uh, uh, fifth race, and uh, I like Miss Mosh. She's a really speedy daughter of Bernstein, not as speedy as our co-worker Nikki Bernstein, but uh, almost. <laughs> 
just as speedy as her. Uh -huh. uh, just joking around with Nikki there. And not nearly as charming That's either. That's for sure. And on to the 10th and final race on the uh, afternoon, and then it's going to be a 16,000 maiden claiming test, a mile on the turf course. Uh, as always, there's super high five wagering in the day's last. I went with number nine, and that's Kiki's Tony. And Doug ran last time I thought, I thought that was a pretty decent effort on the turf uh, in her latest start run. And uh, Dylan Davis gets aboard this time. But I see that you went in a, a different direction. Yeah, with Sophia Lenore third at this distance back in February 17th. Turns back, made a four wide bid, uh, I think, against better last time out. She gets a, a tepid nod. You're talking about a tough race to handicap. This is the one that's really going to separate the uh, men from the boys. Is that a good saying? I don't what know. about the women? Boys from the, and the women, too. <laughs> The women are already separated from the men anyways. <laughs> so anyways, that's it for us for now. It seems to have stopped raining, Ron. It's a little bit cloudy, but the raindrops are not... Uh, we can use the rain. We could use the rain. We certainly can. We'll keep you apprised of the situation here. As always, we'll be back the rest of this afternoon. Folks, please come back and join us.